Good morning. Welcome, Bridge of Hope family. We are so glad that you've joined us today for service. At Bridge of Hope, we strongly believe that God is going to do great things in us and through us as we worship and fellowship virtually together. We recognize that in today's world of technology, you could have chosen almost anywhere to worship and attend service today. But instead, God chose you to be here with us. And for that, we say thank you. We encourage you to take just a few moments to digitally greet your neighbors in the comments section. We also encourage you to take just a few moments to share this link so that your friends and family can also be in on all the great things that are happening at Bridge of Hope Church. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to once again come together and worship and praise you. Lord, we know that there are a lot of people out in the world today that are struggling, whether it be with a sickness, an addiction, maybe they're struggling with grief or just something else that's going on in their lives. And they need you, God, to intervene on their behalf. They just need a simple touch from you. Lord, we ask that you heal them, that you touch them, that you bless them, Lord Jesus. We ask that you bless our pastor today as he brings forth the message. We ask that you give us open ears and open hearts to hear it today and for those in the future that may be listening. Lord, we just ask all these things in your name. Amen. Good morning, Bridge of Hope, and welcome to another Sunday service. We are grateful to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. And we're going to be worshiping the Lord with a song that is um, pretty well known. So I want you to worship along with me. And men, remember that this is not a concert, right? We're not just um, spectators. We are uh, joining together and worshiping the Lord. No matter where we are, we can lift our voices, lift our praise, lift our hands. Amen. For the Lord is worthy. And that's what this song talks about. Blessed be your name, Lord God. In the good times and in the bad times, he is worthy. Amen. Blessed be your name. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Sing it out with me. The name of the Lord. Blessed be your name at all times. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious times, no matter what we're going through, Lord, even through things that we don't understand, even through pain, Lord God, that seems beyond our pain threshold, you are capable, Lord God, you are able to sustain us, and we will praise in the middle of it, we will praise through it, and we will see your glory in our lives, we believe it, let's continue worshiping the Lord this morning, church, God bless you.
Good morning, Bridge of Hope family and friends. It's good to be with you this morning. I'd like to read a passage of scripture found in Psalms chapter 34, verses 1 through 9. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers him. O oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. My wife is going to lead us in prayer. Great God of heaven, we are so thankful and so blessed today to be able to come in your presence. Amen. We are so thankful because you have been there for us every moment, every step of the way in the times of trouble. In the times of good, you've always been there. Lord, we thank you once again for salvation. We thank you for coming and giving your life. We're thankful, God, today to come into your presence, realizing we need your help. We cry out to you, yes, our do. Father, for the needs of your precious people, precious Lord. Lord. I pray, God, for those that are sick in body today. We have many in our congregation that needs a divine touch, a miracle, Lord, in their lives and in their bodies. Lord, there's many that are in our communities, Lord, that need you, that needs salvation. I pray, O oh Lord, that we will be a church body that will move forward to be able to be used by your spirit and your power that we make disciples. And God, that we can do our very best in the kingdom of God to spread this word to all that we come in contact with. Lord, I pray, dear Jesus, today for those that are struggling, for those that have special needs, for those that are sick in their body. For those, God, that are having financial difficulties, for those that are having emotional, mental issues, Lord, today, I pray, Father, that you reach down with your mighty hand. Yes, Deliver them, God, from all their troubles. Lord, let your face shine upon each one. Yes, let Lord. your glory come down yes, and do a mighty work. Yes, let your acts of greatness be performed in the lives of each one, that we can rise up and we can bless your holy name for the great things, God, that you are doing among us. I pray, dear Father, that you meet the needs of your people. I pray for our leadership today. I pray, God, for this country and its leaders, Lord, that you will help us, that we would turn to you, God, for guidance and direction in our land today. I pray, God, for those that have unsaved children, those that are struggling, God, with uh, knowing how to trust you and how to believe in you. I pray, God, that a spirit of faith would rise up within your body mm -hmm. And God, that we would take hold of your promises and believe and trust in your word that you have given us today. We give your name praise, glory, and honor. Go with us, be with us throughout this day. Bless our pastor as he brings forth the word of life. And let that life spring up within us, Lord, that it would cause action and it would cause us to reach out to others that we may also breathe the breath of life and give the word of God into the life of those that you bring into our pathway. We give your name praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 
Good morning, Bridge of Hope family. I am Asa Johnson, and we will be breaking for offerings shortly. It's the third Sunday, and today's offering will go towards our general expenses of our local church that assist in funding our ministry programs and overall operations of our church. Philippians 4 and 13 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Please remember to tithe, and if you are submitting funds for other locations, please designate that via Alexio or on your mail-in check. You may give through our Alexio app or by mailing your funds to P.O. Box 370, Pleasant Garden, 27313. Let's bow for prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a beautiful day. We just thank you for our friends, our family. Uh, we just thank you for loving us. We thank you for salvation. We pray, Lord, that this offering goes toward the ministry of the gospel. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, Bridge. I want to uh, make this announcement, especially uh, for our online church, our online uh, participants. This is just for you. So we're just so excited for what God is doing in our Apex campus. He is blessing them. He's adding to them. And they're going to have one of their first major outreach events. And we need four to six volunteers from our online service if you can help join them yes in apex and we're looking for four to six volunteers you'll be helping to cook and serve food as well as some who will help supervise children's activities it's going to be from eight to four on sunday august 15th now for those who are coming from this area you can come up on the 14th and they'll uh, give you uh, rooms to stay in for that night and you can be with them first thing in the morning to help them serve that day this is going to be a sunday serve for the entire campus but we're asking for our online audience if you can go up uh, if you can help us and go up to apex and help them serve as they reach their community it's going to be a wonderful family day it's going to be a picnic people from all over the neighborhoods are going to be coming and we want our apex team to serve and to meet and know people and so we want to uh, just be the service we want to cook for them and uh, you know, probably hot dogs and burgers, and we want to also help them organize children's activities so that our Apex Campus members can just work and connect and meet their neighbors. Amen. So we're just so happy about what's going on there. We'll be having Sunday serve as well here in Greensboro. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you, our online campus, to help serve in Apex. God bless you. Here's what you do. You let Sister Clara know, Clara at bridgeofhope.church. Give her your name and let her know I'm willing to serve on the Apex uh, Family Picnic Day. And then we will forward all your information and they'll uh, connect with you from there. So excited. Sunday serve, August 15th in Apex, August 15th in Greensboro. So excited. Let's serve our communities. God bless you.
morning bridge of hope and everyone across the Piedmont Triad, North Carolina, United States, Canada, and around the world, we, gl we glorify God today as we welcome you into today's service. We want to encourage you, continue to worship him. Thank God for our worship team and, and all those who are serving today, uh, particularly those who are online engaging with you. Talk to one another, encourage one another. Don't forget to give the Lord glory and praise uh, throughout the remainder of the service. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We're continuing in our series, The Marks of Kingdom Citizens, and we're in Matthew chapter 5, continuing in the Beatitudes, and we are looking today on chapter 5, verse 5. I'll be reading the first five verses. Seeing the multitudes or the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And today blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So we continue in our series, The Marks of Kingdom Citizens, by looking at another paradoxical kingdom truth that Jesus taught his disciples. First, I'd like to emphasize what Jesus is doing in the Beatitudes. Uh, he is illustrating that his kingdom is a different kingdom. Uh, it's how is it different? Uh, it's different in really three ways. It's different in that it's radical, it is biblical, and it is divine. Uh, it is radical in that uh, I love the uh, definition for radical that uh, Rosaria Butterfield uses in our book, The Gospel Comes with a House Key. She says radical means it's changing from the root. And so what Jesus is doing here in the Beatitudes, as he is explaining and teaching to his disciples and the crowds who are listening, that his kingdom is not like the kingdoms of this world. He is literally uprooting, going to the source of their minds and heart, uprooting what they understand life is like, is supposed to be like. And it is biblical. What he's saying about his kingdom, the kingdom of God, is that uh, this is biblical. Uh, I'm not giving you something new, but I am saying it in a way that you may not have understood. It is biblical. You'll notice in Psalm 37, and I'll touch Psalm 37 later in the message, but Psalm 37 verse 7, verse 11 says this, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. Notice that Jesus is quoting the psalm. And so what Jesus is saying about his kingdom is consistent with how the Father has revealed it. However, because of the religion uh, 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 and the uh, religious establishment, they have convoluted what God's kingdom is about. And so his kingdom is radically different than the kingdoms of this world, but it is biblically consistent with how the Father has revealed it in time. And not only is it biblically consistent, but but it is divinely given. This revelation that God is giving through Christ of his kingdom is special revelation. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, which helps us see how we ought to view what Jesus is teaching. Verse 13, and we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, this is the apostle Paul speaking to the Thessalonians, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you 
believers. And so this is divinely given. This is a holy message that Jesus has given. And those who are listening to him, his disciples in particular, must recognize that you can't just accept this as good advice and something that a good teacher is given. You must recognize as the Thessalonians recognize that Paul was giving them inspired truth. You must recognize that Christ is giving to his disciples inspired truth that they ought to live on or base their lives around. And, and he's doing this because he's letting everyone know you have lived in this world under the power of the evil one for so long, ruled by your flesh, that you so much so that you've been indoctrinated by the world, not always even recognizing that they've indoctrinated you. But you need to know how by the grace of God, you can be changed and transformed and delivered from this kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the sun and you can live in freedom and in victory. You need to know his grace changes you. And so when he says blessed, Makarios, blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the mourners, blessed are those who are meek. It's totally different than life outside of the kingdom of God. These who are listening and hearing him talk about the kingdom. He's saying, those who are citizens of my kingdom, they are blessed. And their lives are totally different than those who are living in the kingdom of this world. Uh, I saw this funny clip, and I'd like to play it now to show you uh, something that epitomizes what is life like in this world. Excuse me. I know you didn't think anyone would catch you, but you just slammed your door into my car. The least you can do is say you're sorry, lady. You don't have to take that tone. It's not like I'm hurting your resale value. I'm sorry. See? Like that. lost control of myself. It was like an out-of-body experience, and I was there watching this woman go insane, and the woman was me. But you know what, Hal? I'd do it all over again. It felt great. It was almost worth destroying my car. 
Well, honey, the important thing is no cops were there to see it. No one says a word. This is my one, my one to your 11,000. <laughs> In this show, the Malcolm on the middle, and you see the mom and, and how she responds to the lady in the parking lot. Uh, did you notice that she enjoyed her rage? Did you recognize that the rage she exhibited uh, came at the cost to her family? And yet in her mind, she felt like it was worth it. She forgot her reputation. Notice people are, are standing outside looking at her and the other woman that she's in this road rage uh, mind with. And nothing matters except vengeance. She forgets the shame to her children. She forgets her physical, emotional, and the social destruction of losing one's temper. All that she's thinking about is I've got to win this battle. I've got to take what's mine. That's the spirit of this world. Give to others what you think they deserve. Be the aggressor. Don't let anyone get the upper hand on you. Treat others based solely on their behavior towards you. Hurt others before they have a chance to hurt you. Escalate. Hold grudges. Remember their faults. Remind them of their failures. Win at all costs. Believe that you are better. Force your way. Into this environment, Jesus introduces a different kingdom, a teaching that unveils, unveils the blessing of abiding in his kingdom. And so in Matthew chapter five, verses three and five, he teaches them, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they that mourn. And we've gone over these over the last few weeks. Today we look at blessed are the meek. What's so good and unique about being meek? I'd like to say that the, the meek have their souls calmed by God. The word translated meek in our passage is also translated in various passages of scripture, gentle and humble. When Jesus says, blessed are the meek, he, he is referring to an inward work that's manifesting itself outwardly because of what is happening in you, the meekness that is in your soul. You are manifesting a disposition that honors God. Thomas Watson says, by nature, the heart is like a troubled sea, casting forth the foam of anger and wrath. Meekness, however, calms the passions. It sits as a moderator in the soul, quietly giving check to its distempered emotions. Meekness. Meekness, it's a work of God in our heart whereby the thing that's in us wants to rage, it's calmed by the grace of God. I'm reminded of Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, and the Bible speaks about Moses. And the scripture says of Moses in, in chapter 12, verse 3, it says he is the most humblest man on the earth. The man Moses was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. How interesting, because when we are first introduced to Moses in the book of Exodus, Moses first, of course, he is born into this family and he is miraculously saved uh, by his sister and the daughter of Pharaoh. But as he gets old and he sees the injustice against his people, the Israelites. He wants to take control and bring them out of this uh, horrible condition. And so he literally sees someone hurting an Israelite. And so he lets so that man know, you're not going to touch my people. And he kills the man. 
thinks he can take control. He is a leader. He is in the house of Pharaoh. He's got power, but he knows he's done something wrong. So he hides the body. And later on, it comes to knowledge. You killed some man. He started off a murderer and take control. He lost his temper, full of rage, couldn't believe what the injustice that was taking place. And then he realized the power that he thought he could use didn't exist. He himself was powerless. For 40 years, he's on the run. I wanted to tell you, for 40 years, he's on the run until he comes in contact with God at this uh, fiery bush. And the Lord speaks to him and reveals himself to him, calls him and begins changing his heart as Moses yields to God. The blessed ones are those that God has taken out of the world wild and unbridled and has taken their wheels. And it becomes yielded in his hand. So Moses, a fiery guy, is able to harness that passion in surrender to the Lord. I want you to know it came because he recognized the power of God, not his own strength. He didn't think he recognized, I don't have the strength to change anything, but God who is sovereign, he can change anything. I surrender to him. And so the emotions, the, the things that irked me, after a while I learned to surrender my fears, my concerns, my, my frustrations to the Lord, and he calms spirit. You ever put something on fire, put water on fire, and the water comes boiling? And I remember my mother used to say, don't touch the water and don't touch the pot because it's boiling over. I want you to know, if you touch it, you'll be burned. And there are many people in the kingdom of darkness, whose temperament is overwhelming and boiling over and they cannot be touched. Because if you touch them, if you come in contact with them, if you deal with them, you will be hurt. You're, you'll be hurt by their words. You'll be hurt by their attitude. You'll be hurt by their hands. Until God comes in their life, and takes control and he calms that wild, unbridled, frustrated spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the ones who have been made meek by God. Blessed are the ones in whom God's hand is moving in my heart, changing my life, literally calming the temperature of my soul. It's one of the benefits of being meek, of meekness. Those who are meek, they become like their king. Jesus says, blessed are the meek. Jesus models for us. Jesus just doesn't command us to be meek. He, he, he transforms us as we yield to him, but he also sets the model of him. I love in Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, verse five, and this is when Jesus is coming into Jerusalem to, to be acknowledged as the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And the Bible says in verse five, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble, meek, gentle, Mounted on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a beast of burden. Jesus comes showing, listen, I have all power, but I'm not coming to destroy. I'm coming to save. I'm coming to help. I'm coming to change. And I'm humble because 
I know the power that I have. And so I don't have to impress. I don't have to move you with my words. I just have to do what God tells me to do. I can respect who you are and recognize your stature, your role, what have you. It doesn't add to me or take from me. He is humble. And I want you to know when he says, blessed are the meek ones, blessed are the ones that the Lord is causing to become meek. Listen, they are blessed because they are resembling their king, the king of the kingdom, Jesus himself. The meek trust in the ways of God. I want to go to Psalm for a second. We're going to touch um, Psalm 36 and Psalm 37. And what we're going to see in these passages is the ways of God and the meek trust in him. Look at Psalm 36, verse 11. I'll start at verse 10. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. Notice what he says. First of all, though, this is something very important about the meek. They know God. When we come into the kingdom of God, he invites us into the kingdom and we sit at his feet and we learn of the Lord. And here's something that's important. We have a relationship. We don't just learn about him. We know him. Hallelujah. We know his righteousness. We know his goodness. And so listen to what the psalm says. You are steadfast in your love towards me and you are righteous to the upright. And so God, since you are righteous, Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked to drive me away. He says, I know what you are like. And so he doesn't say, I got to drive the wicked out of here. No, he says, Lord, don't allow the wicked to drive me out. Lord, it is in your hands that I trust. Lord, I know you and I know your ways. Lord, keep me from being driven out by the wicked. Look at chapter 37, the Psalm, Psalm 37, verse, um, verse 10 and 11 there as well. In a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. The wicked will be no more. Why? Because the Lord is righteous. The meek recognize that the haughty, the wicked, the arrogant, their ways are in opposition to God. And so we humble ourselves before the Lord. We don't act bossy and pushy. And listen, this this is a process. This doesn't just begin the day you come into God's kingdom because the Bible lets us know that uh, there is the ways of the world, which is the works of the flesh, and then there is the way of the spirit. If you go with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, look at this. It says, but... Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, I warn you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those are characteristics of those who are in the kingdom of the world. But then he says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, which is meekness, self-control. And against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I want to say here, the ways of God are known by the spirit. It's the spirit who bear, who who not only reveals the ways of God, but it's the spirit who translates God's ways into your ways, into your heart. And you become like him. But you trust in God because you recognize, wait a minute, those are works of the flesh. Those are inconsistent with God's kingdom. And, And you recognize, I don't have to fight. I know the ways of my God. 
He stands in opposition to evil. He stands in opposition to wickedness. He stands in opposition to the arrogant and the proud and the haughty, the high-minded. I will trust and wait on him because I know his ways. We blessed are the ones who are made meek because they know the ways of God. And so when it seems as if the wicked are in charge, wait on the Lord. You're meek, you're patient because you know the ways of God. The meek know that they will receive God's promises. It's one of the great benefits of the meek. It's why he said, blessed are the meek. The blessing is in meekness and the blessing is what the meekness receive. Go back to both Psalm 37 and Matthew 5. Blessed are the meek for they shall what? They shall inherit the earth. Look at Psalm 37, 10 and 11 again. And I think this is very powerful. In verse 10, he says, in a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. Listen, the promise of God and, and the context of this, this is looking at Israel who has been promised through Abraham a land. But the land is, is inhabited by the Canaanites and the Amorites. And these uh, people are living wicked before the Lord. But God has made a promise to his people. And his promise is this. I will bring you into this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. We've heard it so many times. But the Bible tells us in Psalm 37, for in a little while, he, he's, he's, he's humbly trusting the Lord. He says, in a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at this place, he will not be there. Why? Because the meek, those who are trusting in God, humbly, patiently waiting on God, though it seems like it's taken forever, though I've seen generations born and die, yet I know my God is faithful. His promises are yea and amen. For God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. God will cause his promises to come to fruition. And so though you're looking at wicked men and wicked women in places of authority, and it seems like they are in charge by Friend, in the kingdom of God, we recognize only one is in charge. The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. For he says in Psalm 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in it. If God promised you something in this world, if he promised something to the people of God, you can trust that it's going to come to pass. And that's what he did to Israel. He promised them the land. In Genesis 15, 15 to 16, the Bible tells us of a promise that he said to Abraham. Look at it, verse 15. He says, as for you, Abraham, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. And they shall come back, your offspring, shall come back here in the fourth generation for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. God has promised to Abraham, your descendants will go into the promised land. And, and, and the generation after generation after Abraham is gone and dead, the Bible tells us that they're wondering, wait a minute, how are we stuck in Egypt? How are we in slavery? How are we not free? How are we? But we got to... Remember, blessed are the meek, those who humbly trust in the Lord, because God will be faithful to his promise, which means this, whatever God says we will have and we will do, it will come to pass. This is why we must be meek. We don't take it by force. No, 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 no. We trust in the Lord because you will possess what you did not strive after. Did you hear me? The meek are not trying to take by force. 
The meek are not grabbing. The meek are not fighting and in a war over it. No, the meek are trusting in the Lord. They are honoring God. They're doing what they are supposed to do, but they're also hoping and waiting and trusting in the Lord. And I want you to see what's going to happen. God delivers the land to Israel. Sometimes people are doing wrong to you and you and and you have the promises of the word that he will defend you that he is your fighter that the lord is your refuge and i want to remind you of what romans 12 and 18 to 20 says it says listen vengeance is mine says the lord i will repay in other words don't try to gain the victory on your own let coals a fire be heaped on their head. In other words, God's going to judge them because they thought they can treat God's people any kind of way. But you trust in the promises of God. You will inherit the earth. And I love it. In other words, I want you to see this inheritance in two ways. Blessed are the meek. The meek will inherit the earth. What in this world God says we will have, we will have. So I want you to see this, this kingdom promise. Blessed are they, blessed are the meek because they shall inherit the earth. It's twofold. It's the kingdom now and the kingdom not yet. It is that we will have in this world. We, he will touch our bodies. He will be merciful to us. He will provide for us. He will open our wounds. He will call, he will comfort us in our pain and in loss. The, he, he will redeem us. He will hear our prayer. In this world, we will inherit what God promises, but all things won't be given in this world. So how, wait a minute, well, how does that work? Because you said the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, remember, turn with me to Revelations for a second. And, and I want us to just quickly look at two passages, one in Revelations 18 and one in Revelation 21. In Revelation 18, we see the fall of Babylon. We see God saying in verse four, come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues for her sins are heaped high as heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others. Repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she is mixed. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand afar off in fear of her torment and say, alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in the single hour your judgment has come. So notice God's people seem to have suffered loss. But God says those who are in charge of the earth, those who seem to have control and they're manipulators and they're abuters, abusers and they're evil and they're wicked. I want you to know maybe right now some things you're not going to see with your own eyes. But he said when I promised you the meek will inherit the earth, those who have the earth right now, one day it will be taken from them and they will mourn. And they will be repaid double. And you go back to chapter 21. What does the Lord say in verse 21 through the vision of John? Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. And he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them. And as we heard before, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. And neither shall be mourning or crying or pain for the former things have passed away. And God goes on to say, behold, he makes all things new. You will inherit the earth. Then. What you don't receive in this life, God says, I'm going to I'm going to refine by fire a new earth and a new heaven and you will inherit it. So I want to tell you something. You'll get what the Lord has promised. Don't be greedy. 
You'll get what the Lord has promised. Don't be ungodly. You'll get what the Lord has promised. Don't be vengeful. Don't be covetous. You'll get it because it belongs to the Lord. And remember, he is able alone to distribute what belongs to him. How do we become meek? How do we become meek? James chapter one, verse 21 tells us. It says this. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. And listen to this. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. And, and so it sounds like, well, you got to be meek to receive the word. No, 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 no. Humbly receive the word from the Lord. Humbly receive the word. In other words, as God's word comes to you, receive it with humility. Trust that God is sending you the word and you receive it and you obey it and recognize it's always for me. You're not going to sit around and say, well, well, you know, that message is not for me and I don't have to listen to this and, you know, I don't have to do all that. No, no. Whenever God speaks, whenever you open the word, whenever God reveals his truth to us, we accept it humbly. We're going through this study on, on Wednesday nights with uh, radically ordinary hospitality. And I'm telling you, it's tearing me up. And I just am. And, and what's amazing, what I find is that sometimes we're raised in church. And as I go back to scripture and I look at scripture afresh, you recognize sometimes you may have been raised in a Christian home, but not always be doing what the word says. And that's why you can't listen to Christian culture. You have to listen to the word of God. And we receive it humbly saying, I, 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 there are many times I read God's word, but I, every time I come back to it, I don't act like, oh, I know that. No, humbly. It's like the first time. What are you saying to me, Lord? What are you saying? Secondly, allow the Lord to not just give you the word, not just for you to obey the word, but Allow Christ and the Holy Spirit to shape you. That's the only way to become meek because he shapes you into his image and into his likeness. Look at what he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. And th this is paramount to the people of God. In order for us to become meek, we must follow the motto of Christ, the person of Christ. Matthew 11, verse 29 says this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me, for I am gentle, I am meek, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We've got to, we've got to learn from Jesus. It's not enough just to read his word and memorize his word and say, okay, God says do this. Okay, I got to do it. No, we got to, Jesus, reveal yourself to me that I might become like you. When he says, take my yoke upon you. So it's, it's it, it, when they train an ox, they'll, they'll attach him to a yoke and there's an older ox and a younger ox and the younger ox learns how to move based on the older ox. And he says, come, let attach yourself to the yoke that I'm in and I will teach you how to live. I, you, I will reveal my meekness, my gentleness, my lowliness of heart. And you will become like me. Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse 26, that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Look at verse 26. It's the Holy Spirit who's going to teach us about Christ. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance what? All that I, Jesus, have said to you. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to shape you into the image and nature and mindset of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 bears this out as well. 
that that it is God's desire that we become like Christ. Look at Philippians chapter two, verse three to five. He says this. He says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, in meekness, count others more significant than yourselves and let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now, this this can this can struggle. We can struggle with this. Right. Have the mind of Christ. He says, don't be, he's, he, do, he doesn't say don't be ambitious, but don't be selfishly ambitious. He said, don't do anything out of vain conceit. But he says, humbly, meekly, look at others and consider what they need as important or more important than yours. And you say, wait a minute, I can't put them first. Think about what Jesus did. How important is Jesus? And he put us before his divinity. He put our needs. He put our shortcomings before. He knew we would perish because we went away from his kingdom and went into the kingdom of darkness. And so he came and put our needs before. So he says, listen, if you want to become meek, learn from Jesus how to live. Step back. Somebody said, pay it forward. <laughs> Think of the needs of others. But, but, but don't just do it for a social reason. Do it that Christ might be exalted and you're learning from him. And it's important to learn from Jesus because let me tell you, you're going to have things in life that are going to test you and you've got to learn, hallelujah, from the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, Paul, Paul talks about a situation and he and really had to learn the grace of God. Look at what he says. He says, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but everyone deserted me. May the Lord not charge it against them. This is meekness. He says, they did wrong. They abandoned me. I was good to them. How could they do that to me? I'm going to repay them. I'm not going to forget what you did. No, he says, Lord... Have mercy. Why does he say, Lord, have mercy? Don't bring it to their charge. Because, Lord, I know I have failed. I know they didn't understand what they did. I've come to recognize they need grace. Have mercy, Lord. That's how you become meek. By exercising the grace of God. Receive his word humbly. Learn from Christ by the Holy Spirit in every circumstance and submit to him. Isn't that what 1 Peter tells us? To submit to the Lord, submit to Christ. It's our last passage of the day. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. He says this, starting in verse six, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he might exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Listen, you've got to submit yourself to the Lord under the mighty hand of God because he cares for you. You've got to submit to Christ, not just obey him, not just learn from him, submit your plans and your wills to the Lord. And, and submit, look at that word, uh, uh, a minister from the orchard, I've mentioned him before, I've, I've learned so much lately from uh, Pastor Colin. He says this, he says, meekness grows through the discipline of committed relationships. And he talks about submitting to God and submitting to others. And he says, listen, one of the ways we submit to God by submitting in our relationships, and that's how we become meek. And we recognize that God teaches us, take a step back, teaches us, be gentle when we could have been harsh, teaches us, 
self-control and to be quiet when we want to say something. Why is that so important? Because the flesh, the spirit of this world wants us to live autonomous lives, autonomous from God and autonomous from one another. But God wants us to be me and he brings us into relationship and we submit to him in every relationship. We submit to him in every relationship and in those relationships, we submit to one another, particularly as Christ speaks to our loved ones and speaks through, through those we know. Listen, in the church of God, we have to submit to one another. When they're sharing the word, when they're praying for us, we have to encourage one another and listen to one another and learn from one another, the older to the younger, and sometimes even the younger, the old, younger to the older. God wants us to be meek because it's the blessed life. It's in his kingdom. Would you pray with me for meekness? God. Help me as I surrender to you. Father, we come today recognizing we have grown up in a world that's dog eat dog. I'm going to get mine. Ambish, selfish ambition. It's hit them, hurt them before they hit or hurt me. Vengeance, war. Father, today, you called us into your kingdom. I pray that you would work in us, Holy Spirit, that we might become me. Taking on the mind of Christ, trusting in the ways of Christ, knowing that Christ is in charge. He sits on the throne and we, we, all we need to do is cast our cares upon him because you care for us. And we don't have to fight the battle. We don't have to get our vengeance. We don't have to go after others. We don't have to be vindictive and spiteful. Lord, you are looking out for us. Change our hearts today. Because you said for those who are meek, you promised us the earth in this life and the new earth and the new heavens in the life to come. Holy Spirit, fill us, shape us, renew us. Blessed are the meek. Hello, Bridge of Hope family. Thank you for joining us today for worship and service. We are so glad to have you here with us. Let me share with you some upcoming events and announcements that we would love for you to be a part of. Our adult Bible study is held on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Our senior Bible study has moved to Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Both the adult and the senior Bible studies are studying radically ordinary hospitality. Books are available via the church office and you can purchase them online or using cash. Our middle schoolers will hold their Bible study on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Our high schoolers are taking the month of July off and they will return to Bible study in August. Also, there is no college Bible study until students return for the fall semester. And once we have a date, we will let you know when that is. If you haven't already heard, we are now back to one in-person service at 10 a.m. Pre-registration, temperature checks, and masks are not required. So as you feel comfortable doing so, we welcome you back to in-person service. On Sunday, August 22nd, we will be celebrating New Life Sunday. So if you're interested in being baptized or becoming a member of the Bridge of Hope family, we encourage you to go out to our website to complete the application and sign up for a membership class. We can't wait to celebrate you on August 22nd. All of this information can also be found within our weekly newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday. So if you're not already signed up to receive that, we encourage you to do so, so you don't miss out on all of the great things happening at the bridge. 
We would also love to connect with you. So connect with us via any of our social media platforms. And as always, thank you for joining and have a blessed week. Thank you, Sister Jessica and Pastor Javier and everyone who has served today and you who have been with us, worshiping, encouraging one another. Uh, we're just thankful to be God's people. A lot is going on in the world, but oh, he has a people who he is caring for and is helping care for one another. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you have loved us and called us into your kingdom for such a time as this that we might live as your people. God, I pray we would be poor in spirit. I pray we would mourn for the brokenness of our world. I pray that your spirit will cultivate a meek heart and, and life that we might resemble you in this world. Oh, your kingdom come and your will be done. Bless your people and bless the works of our hands as we make disciples in Greensboro, the Piedmont Triad and Apex and beyond. In Jesus name we pray, amen. God bless you, Bridge. Love you.